Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kavanaugh's Corner. Last week I brought to you one of the greatest films of all time, Blade Runner. Uh, I reviewed it in 4K. If you missed it, uh, please check out my video on that. It's a great 4K transfer. This week I have the movie that came out around the same time as Blade Runner and took the wind right out of its sails. I'm talking about the best movie of 1982 in terms of money-making, the most money-making movie of 1982, I should say. Today, I'm going to be talking about the brand new 35th anniversary edition of E.T. Here it is right here in 4K. We're going to be talking about that today on Kavanaugh's Corner. Play the intro. <music> channel. Um, before I get into the review of, uh, of E.T. here, um, I want to just say thank you uh, for everyone that has subscribed in the last couple weeks. Um, I finally surpassed 100 subscribers. Now, it's not a lot, um, but for somebody that just kind of does this for fun and, uh, you know, someone that just loves to talk about movies, um, it really makes me feel glad that there's over 100 of you out there that uh, enjoy listening to me as much as I enjoy kind of giving you this content. So I wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for uh, subscribing to my channel here, and uh, let's keep it up. So if you know anybody that uh, enjoys these kind of movies as much as I do and they want to hear my opinion, um, please share my video, um, like the video if you enjoy my reviews. It really does me a lot of good. So thank you again for everyone that subscribed. Uh, but now let's get into the review of E.T., the extraterrestrial. Um, this is Steven Spielberg's legendary uh, classic here. Um, one of many of his legendary classics, uh, right up there with Jaws and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Jurassic Park. I could go on and on and on. Actually, I have most of his uh, movies over here except for the Jaws sequels that kind of suck. Um, I like the second one, but the third and fourth one, uh, forget it. But uh, E.T. is a special movie uh, for me. It's one of the first live-action movies I ever saw when I was a kid. And uh, yet again, very similar to Blade Runner, ironically enough, I've had every version of E.T. that's come out. Um, all the way since, I think it was one of the first like copies when it came out on VHS. Um, it had like a green top to it. It was really weird, but I remember that. And we watched it so much, I wore it out. Um, but I loved that movie when I was a kid. Even though uh, the part where the, uh, the uh, FBI, CIA, whatever you want to call them, the agents come in uh, with the spacesuits on, that scared the living shit out of me when I was a kid. Um, but now it's all kind of funny, you know. Um, but anyway, this is the, uh, I'm going to kind of take it out of the box here in a second. This is the 35th anniversary of the movie, which is amazing. Um, again, same as Blade Runner. Uh, this is the, uh, the limited edition of it. And I'll actually take this piece off here. I love the back of it. It says E.T. Phone Home on the back. I thought that was great with the, uh, the silhouette of the guys looking for E.T. with the flashlights. I love it. It also comes with a little collectible book, which I thought was really nice. It has a little handwritten thing, a little introduction from Drew Barrymore at the beginning, which I thought was great. It also has um, a copy of the soundtrack, the original soundtrack remastered, which sounds amazing, by the way. Um, I really love the way the soundtrack sounds. They did a really good job remastering this. Um, and, of course, the new 4K edition of the movie, which also includes the uh, regular Blu-ray and the, uh, I think, a digital copy. Yes, it does come with a digital copy, so that's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, E.T., I mean, what can I say about E.T. that hasn't already been said about it? E.T. is a masterful family film. Um, I love this movie. This is, again, right up there with, uh, you know, I mean, this is probably in my top 10 favorite movies of all time. Uh, I, I adore this film and the wonder, it, it, the kind of wonder and emotions it, it, it stirs up inside of me is still powerful to this day. And I love this movie. Um, the ending, I still think, is one of the toughest endings to get through in any film. Um, I watched this just the other day in 4K, and I still kind of tear up at the ending. I'm not ashamed to say that. It is a really, really emotional ending. 
um, and I love it. Uh, John Williams' score, which I'm so glad, one of the reasons why I got this is because it came with the soundtrack, but his score to this movie is just incredible. Um, John Williams is probably one of the greatest composers of our time, and his work in this movie, without it, this movie would be nothing. And I think even Spielberg said it at one point that, you know, if you took the score out of the end of the movie, it's a really uninteresting, boring ending. Um, with his music, it is a heartbreaking ending, and it's, it's marvelous. Uh, but anyway, about the 4K transfer in this, the um, other, when this came out, I think back in like, was it like 2000, God, was it 2012? Um, it came out in the 30th anniversary edition, and that was a 4K remaster then. Um, sadly, we didn't have the technology um, to view it in 4K at the time, but now that we actually have the 4K Ultra HD uh, format here, we can finally watch the movie with the high dynamic range, and it is, it's amazing. Um, this is a great transfer in the movie. Um, the colors are the number one thing in the movie that really benefits. The colors in this film are just outstanding. And it is a major step up from the regular Blu-ray in terms of colors. Now, visuals. Visuals as a whole, it is a good upgrade. Um, I think the detail you see in this is a little bit crisper. The film grain is still in the movie. You need to keep the film grain in order to keep the movie filmic. Um, you cannot take film grain out of a film, especially a movie that was shot on film. You cannot take the film grain out, and if you do, you lose the definition of detail. Uh, you lose, you know, facial detail, you lose details on clothing. It's not a good thing to do. So thankfully, Universal has wised up and has done a really good job with this transfer. There's a new DTS-X uh, soundtrack on this one, and it sounds great. Um, the 7.1 was awesome. It's not a gigantic change from the 7.1 of the last release. Um, it is a minor step up. It's not gigantic, but I noticed that things were a little bit more spaced out and the audio is clear as can be. I mean, this is definitely the best version of the movie you can get right now. Um, if you just have the new release Blu-ray, I'm sure it'll, it'll do. But I think the number one thing that's enhanced in this is the colors. The colors, even the title card, the purple print with the black background, even the title card is better looking in this version. Um, the scene where the, you know, the kids are riding off past the sunset um, and they're flying on the bikes, the colors of the sunset are just so much more vibrant in this film. And there's one other thing I wanted to mention, and it is a noticeable thing in, in the new 4K version. Any scenes that include flashlights in the dark in this version are blindingly bright. Um, now, it may be, you know, the way I have my TV set up. Uh, again, I don't know anybody else currently right now that has this new version. But I will say that the brightness in certain scenes is also enhanced a lot, especially when there's light versus dark. The blacks uh, and the black level of the 4K version are basically perfect in this. It, it's, a, it's really cool to see, um, especially the scene um, near the beginning of the movie where the guys are looking for E.T. with the flashlights. When they flash the lights directly into the camera, you get a really wild lens flare in this version. And the lens flare is this like beautiful, like purplish red hue. And it's like nothing I've ever seen. It's a really cool touch that they use that in this version. Other than that, um, I do have some negatives for this. And unlike Blade Runner that I talked about last week, the special effects in this movie have not aged well. And I'm sorry to say it is extremely more noticeable in this 4K version especially um, the shots of the kids on the bikes, Elliot on the bike, I should say, when he's flying, um, the spaceship at the beginning and the end of the film, it looks really bad in certain shots. Any shot that is has to do with like composites, in this new 4K version, it's very noticeably dated. 
And again, there's nothing you can do about that, sadly. I mean, they made the movie in 82. They did what they did with the, they did what they could with the budget. But sadly, the special effects just, they do not hold up very well. Does it add the nostalgia factor? Oh yeah, like I love seeing the old composite effects. Like it's actually kind of cool to see that. And I'm really glad that Spielberg and the guys at Universal, people at Universal, I should say, made the decision to do the original version in 4K and not that re-release version that came out, I think back in like the early 2000s, um, where they took the the guns out of the eight, the FBI agents' hands and replaced them with walkie-talkies. I'm really glad it's not that version. As much as the special effects in that version look a lot better, um, you lose something. But it's it not the original film, and you get to that Star Wars special edition type territory. And I think Spielberg wants people to forget that that version ever happened um, because it's not anywhere to be found in this set. Is that a bummer? It's kind of a bummer because I wish they had both versions. You could switch back and forth between. But in the end, I'd much rather watch the original version. It's still a masterpiece of a film. I love E.T. And I absolutely love this new edition of 4K, in, in 4K, I should say. Is it worth the upgrade from the last Blu-ray? I'd say, yeah. Um, if you have a 4K TV, it's worth the upgrade just to see the colors, the HDR effects in this are just outstanding. Um, just the clarity as a whole, the whole movie just looks a lot clearer. But is it a must? Not really. Um, I'd say if you have a 4K TV and you have a surround sound set up, it's definitely worth it. Um, the limited edition version, is it worth it for the limited edition? You can probably settle for just the regular 4K edition. Um, I got the limited edition because I'm a nutcase and I love having the special editions of movies, especially with the soundtrack and the book and everything. I really like having that. It's worth the buy if you have the setup. If not, you're probably good with the old Blu-ray. That's all I have for today for Kavanaugh's Corner. Again, I want to say thank you for coming back to the channel here. As I said earlier, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have this version, let me know what you thought in the comments section. Until then, have a good one. Take it easy.